Hi everyone, Dr. Brian Scott with you. We are continuing this week our study about the rapture of believers that will occur at the end of this uh, time frame we're living in. This is pretty good stuff. Welcome to Insight to the End Times. And if you're interested, and I hope you are, in going back and looking at some of our, and listening to some of our previous insights, please go to our website, insighttotheendtimes.com. We have been sharing these insights since the early part of 2022. And today is the uh, first day of August, 2023. So we're going to get right back into the word we're talking about. The term rapture it doesn't appear in scriptures, but it is defined as being caught up. And the Greek word for harpazo means to snatch or to seize or to take suddenly and go from one place to another. We, we looked yesterday at the first three raptures that have already occurred in Scripture. And when I'm saying raptures, I'm really talking about being removed from this earth into heaven, living, not having to go through death. And the first three that we have covered were individuals. Uh, the individual Enoch in Genesis chapter 5, also referred to in Hebrews 11 verse 5. Then we have Elijah the prophet, who is taken as Elisha, his uh, protege, looks on and receives his anointing and his ministry in 2 Kings chapter uh, 2. And then the third one is our Lord Jesus Christ, who is raptured according to Acts 1, verses 9 to 11. He was taken up into the clouds. Now, the word harpazo means to be snatched or seized or taken vi uh, violently or suddenly. And there's a couple other instances where we do see this having occurred, but it's not quite the same. Let me give you an illustration here. The Apostle Paul, he was caught up into the third heavens, and he wrote about it in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 to four. Let me read that to you. He says, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I don't know or whether out of the body I don't know, God knows. But such a man was caught up to the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body I don't know, God knows. How he was caught up into paradise and he heard inexpressible words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. So there's the word harpazo in operation. He was caught up into the third heaven. He had a heavenly experience, but he came back to this earth and he lived on the earth until he actually died. But notwithstanding, the same activity occurred. He was caught up into the third heaven. Then we have Philip, the evangelist. Philip gets this insight from the Lord to go down into the desert to meet with the Ethiopian eunuch who's searching the scriptures but doesn't understand them. So Philip arrives on the scene, and uh, in Acts chapter 8, we see these uh, verses, 38 through 40. Here's what they say. This is an interesting scenario. He commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. Now, when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away so that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. So once again, harpazo, meaning caught up, a pen, to be seized or snatched, to, to be taken very suddenly. You're here one moment, and then you're gone the next. Now, we are talking about being raptured into heaven, but this word harpazo also has this caught up reference. And in Philip's case, we call it translated. He was coming out of the water with the eunuch after baptizing him, and then the next thing, he's gone. Verse 40 says he was found in Azotus, Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities all the until he came to Caesarea. So he was in one location, transported, translated, caught up and moved to another one instantaneously. That's pretty cool stuff. Amen. No, so we're seeing the fact that in the scriptures, this caught up uh, rapture type activity is quite, quite common. It happens several times. Now, I want to 
share some thoughts about these three individuals that we talked about yesterday, e Enoch, Elijah, and Jesus. Let me give you three points I want to share with you. Number one, these raptures of these three men, this is not symbolic. This is actual. These are literal events that occurred. Literal events that occurred. The rapture that's coming for the church is going to be an actual event. And it's going to be something else. It's going to be so outstanding. It's going to really, really shock people. Number two, in each of these cases, these men were moved from one location to another. And when we take those other two illustrations into event, we have four of the five men who went from earth up to heaven. Now, one came back. That was Paul. But the other three are still in heaven. And they, Philip was moved geographically from one location to another. So we have, we have literal, actual movement from one location to another when the rapture occurs. And then number three, these events were very sudden, extremely sudden. No warning, no fore, forewarning whatsoever. One, they, they, they were here one moment and gone the next. Wow. Now, most church people I know who have any understanding of the rapture at all are all hoping for it to occur and hoping for it to occur really soon. And they may or may not realize what they're hoping for because uh, it's going to be very, very sudden. It's going to be very actual and very literal. And there's going to be a physical movement from one place to another. I've heard people say this, what happened to my pet? I have a dog. What will happen to my dog? Another one said, what's going to happen to my car? Who's going to be driving my car? Another one said, what about my home? I've got a home with a lot of stuff in it. Who's going to take that over? I don't think you're going to be too concerned once it happens. You're going to be in a better place. You're going to be in heaven. You're going to be on the streets of gold and the, and the, and the everything just absolutely beyond comprehension. I don't think you'll be too concerned. But there's going to be an awful lot of shock left behind by people who don't know what's going on. It's like, whoa, what's going on, man? <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, listen, I'm coming back tomorrow with some more interesting facts about the rapture, which are really going to be, uh, you're going to really enjoy them. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Are you blessed? Amen.